via telephone, Martinsburg City Councilman Corey Roman. Corey, good morning to you. Good morning, fellas. And, um, you know, I was I was excited to hear um, that you all had started with, um, you know, all the, the things that, that interest me the most, um, you know, food, um, clothing. Um, and honestly, you know, I, you, you introed last night why, why I'm not in the studio today, um, because I was up until, you know, 1115, 1130 watching the um, vice presidential debate. Oh, nice. Uh, now, Corey, were you at all surprised to find out that uh, you were on the program yesterday at 8.05? <laughs> that, was in, that was intentional, oh. right, Corey, that you said vice presidential debate? Yeah, you meant presidential oh. debate. No, no, he meant, I think vice he meant vice presidential. Yeah, yeah. It's an audition yeah. to be Trump's number two. Yes. That's, that's seriously how I see it. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> Trump is so demanding um, and so... Um, not dem- demanding is not the word, but so commanding of the base of the Republican Party that I just I genuinely I don't even see why those folks are up there debating. And unless it was to see who's going to get, um, you know, the, the vice presidential slot or some type of appointment down the road. I don't think it's any of the people that were on stage last night. I think it's his daughter or one of his sons. To huh, be vice president? Yeah. No, yeah. I, don't, I don't see that happening. Oh, yeah. The, the, the Trump dynasty. It doesn't end take um he you just know, he just stays in office forever night. i mean that's a good play isn't it <laughs> you know um, i i heard a, a, a theory and I, I can't say where i heard it it's you know the one of the news feeds i get that the fulton county trial is what's going to bring trump down because they have cameras in the courtroom and that it, as opposed to on the federal level where everybody gets to spin what happened in fulton county will be able to watch trump as a defendant sitting at the table doing defendant kind of stuff, and that will take the wind out of his... Out that, out of his again, they don't get it. That's, that's, a, that's, that's, not gonna, that, that's gonna do nothing but bolster his case. It's, it's hard to sit there for six months and look strong. Yeah, with that's all, the ultimate the weakness, way. actually. Yeah, it, it's, it's, I, I, I say today, when he's going in this mm-hmm. complex, which is a lot different than a federal courthouse building, to be arraigned and, have his, and go through the uh, booking process, I think things might change internally. Not externally, it's going to be the same Trump that we've always seen. But I think today's going to be uh, hit a little different. I want to go back to the vice president thing here, Corey. Right. So, yeah. why do you pick a vice president? You, you pick a vice president to help to you win. win. Yeah. Do you pick a VP to help you win a state you think you might not win, or someone who's who gives you something that you don't have within your exactly. party? Right. So, exactly. what is it that Trump? What's what state is a borderline state that Trump would need to win that one of these presidential candidates could bring to him? What, you know, what 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 other what other candidate on the stage last night can bring something to him that he didn't have already? He doesn't need any of these people. That's why I say he's going to pick a son or daughter. And and I, I get that argument, but I, I still sit on the fact that I don't know that that is his thought process i think that genuinely he looked on that stage last night and was looking for who was going to defend him um who was going to um kind of carry his flag in his absence um and i i i know you all probably watched as well or at least the recap um but i would say the one person that really was carrying his flag was vivek but i don't see vivek being a a viable um republican um, even vice presidential, candidate, right? And, you know, and, let alone a president. And there's candidate. there's a difference so I between get your argument. There's there's a difference between carrying somebody's flag and carrying somebody's water. He's he's a water carrier. Okay. But, now, if you look back at the Republican convention when Trump was nominated, who gave the best speech? If you remember, who gave the best speech of everybody, anybody, period, who was on that stage? It was his daughter. His daughter gave the best speech of anybody that was on that stage that, that was three, four days, whatever yeah, it was. I, I so, just don't think... Besides the, him, of course. The, I, I, so let me, go ahead. I was just going to say, let me ask the question then. Do you think that does any benefit for him in, in the general election? That there's two Trumps now on the ticket, that there isn't a, a watered-down, um, so to say, conservative, or a, a not watered-down, but maybe a middle-of-the-road more... Um, common sense, as I'd like to call him, conservative, that could balance the Trump ticket going in 24. I just think that, you know, if he does, um, like you said, Rob, that that's just an automatic shot in the shot in the foot, and we're going to end up with Joe Biden again. 
See, I don't think Trump's going to be the nominee. Oh. I, I think that he's got too much baggage. I think that the, the uh, he only, what is it, 90 different counts? He only has to be convicted on one of them. And the odds are stacking against him. I think the optics of sitting in the courtroom are going to be just really awful. And this is a great opportunity. While he's not campaigning, other people can. And I, and I think there's an exhaustion um, among folks that they, they just don't want him anymore. Plus, if he is the nominee, Joe Biden will be president again. I don't think that I don't think that does it. I think the all the air is sucked out of the room mm-hmm. by a, a, a truth social post or a mugshot or or whatever it is. Every the all the media the apparatuses are pointed their cameras at Trump and mm-hmm. how could anybody else get any sort of traction? And he's not his base. His committed base is not going to shake away from that. So he did the interview with Tucker Carlson prior to the debate last night. Yeah. And it was on X and released. And you know how many views it got? When I went to bed, it was like 80 million plus. Yeah. Wow. Now tell me again how he's not going to be the nominee. No, that's, and, and that's unless, he, unless he's excluded now, by the not, 14th that, Amendment. That's not mean, that doesn't mean that 80 million people watched it from completion. From beginning to the end, it, it means no, they clicked on it, watched I, it for a I little bit. I didn't imply that it did. No, but that's still. I wonder how, what, what what how many people watched the debate last night. You know, I, I don't know. It's, it wasn't eighty million. Well, the difference between on the Fox Network series of networks and X, which is worldwide. Right. No, I, I just I genuinely I do think it'll be interesting to see because I I, I see I foresee with his base. Um, indictments and, and him being um, as just a boost to you know his his loyal supporters and honestly like we had talked about all the folks that felt alienated in 2016 that were never involved in the political process I think this is going to turn some eyes to more of the for, for some more of the folks that would be on the conservative side so I, I don't know that it's all negative for Trump um, and I think it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Uh, he won the debate last night, clearly. He, By not being there? Nobody. What, and I know that that, that, that bothered him. He re- I'm sure he, you know, he really, really wanted to be there, but he was probably relying on the device of his lawyers and, other, and consultants not to be there. But nobody landed a, a real punch on him. The, the people, they're fighting for scraps, those, those eight people that were on the stage last night, in my opinion. Like, they, they may have Nikki Haley's, uh, numbers went up, but at not at the sacrifice of Donald Trump's numbers. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I think they were fighting to be noticed last night. It, it was a, a big field of people that I had never heard of. I thought the North Dakota governor, I've forgotten his name three times. Burgum. Ago, Burgum. Ron Burgum. I, yeah. I think that he stepped forward, and I actually liked what he had to say. I think Vivek was certainly... Um, the most vivid of the people who were up there, and I thought Nikki and Haley did, like did a good job. Obama line, which was um, who is I, I know you all are. Oh, the, the, the Rev, I'm sorry, any kid with the weird last name, and I think it was Christie who called him out right afterwards. But man, you know, I was sitting back and I was like, when he said it, I was like, I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah. And then Chris Christie said it, and I was like, ah! Well, look, we used Obama's to have heard it before. Obama's line when he said his middle name was Hussein, he said, obviously, my parents didn't know I'd one day be running for president. Well, I, you know, Make America Great Again isn't Donald Trump's. That's That was recycled from Ronald Reagan, and that's, you, you know, mm-hmm. wasn't too... No. Nope. You know, we used to, it's important, we used to elect people with character. Now we elect people who are characters. characters. And, and that's social no, media. There's no it, that and probably other things too. Yes, I agree. So who ha, who's the most interesting, captivating person on either side? It's Donald Trump. And uh, Corey, did you watch the entire debate, Corey? Yeah, I watched it all. Hey, your your phone line is kind of fading in and out. There's there's times when you're strong and others when you're kind of lower volume. That I um, am in the car at the moment. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, overall, your impression of what you saw last night and uh, the purpose of it? I mean, like I said, I, I thought the purpose, honestly, and, and we can dis- we can agree to disagree on that. Um, I think that, you know, those folks know that they don't have any shot um, and that they are vying for some type of position, um, whether it be a running mate 
or um, if, you know, the Republicans are, are successful in 24, some type of appointment. Um, I thought that, you know, when it was on substance, um, that it was a good conversation. Um, but, you know, I understand that the days that we're in with, with today's media, um, all of them made sure to uh, drag, um, you know, the Biden administration and Democrats in general every opportunity they got, which I expected completely. Um, but, you know, I, I just I, I thought it was interesting to see, you know, different conservative folks on the stage um, debating issues when majorly all we get to hear from is the, the so to say, loud mouth of the party on both sides. Well, if the goal was to be on the ticket to be a vice presidential candidate or get a, a, a nice presidential appointment, I have to say Chris Christie sucked at that job. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, he, was, hey, he, he was the king of the emperor has no clothes movement last night. I enjoyed his performance a little bit from what I heard in the replays. Dylan Bishop. I will say for the record, for when it comes to the view count on the interview with Tucker Carlson, Elon Musk did uh, change the view count numbers on the website formerly known as Twitter to if you scroll past a video on your timeline without even opening it or looking at it, it counts it as a view. Ah, oh, uh, I do. I will say, Rob, really, I, I think your, your idea is interesting of one of the one of the Trump children uh, as a uh, vice president. I think he would probably uh, go with Ivanka or his favorite son, Jared Kushner. <laughs> and as a, as he was a sitting Democrat, on that line for a while. <laughs> I made Dylan sit on there for five, five minutes. Democrat. I'm sorry, say it again, Corey. Can you hear me now? Yeah. A lone Democrat in, in the conversation here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to. I don't want to characterize Dylan, but I, I don't. I don't know of him to be liberal. Um, I hope one of his children please you, please you, do you said you hope he does choose one of his children i think you faded there yes i hope that he does um because i know a lot of folks that will vote for a uh wet brown bag before they vote they vote for any of the trumps oh, um, so they did, they've already done that <laughs> i will uh leave my comments <laughs> on that one. Um, I, i'm just i'm just <laughs> I'm just sort of kidding, Corey. Just sort of kidding. <laughs> no. I, Mostly I, not, but <laughs> not the full honey, though. Hey, uh, Corey, I want to ask I'll you your a, a couple of questions about some changes that the uh, state is making in regards to uh, how the jail bills will be uh, calculated and the relationships between the county and the city as those bills are calculated going forward. It appears now that if uh, a person is arrested in the city and sent to the ERJ, the city will now pay that daily jail charge as opposed to just the counties the way it has been. Have you gotten all the paperwork on this to fully uh, understand it and vet it? Yeah, so I, I I have enough to be dangerous. You know, I have enough information to be dangerous on the topic. And, um, you know, I was in City Hall yesterday, um, and I was talking with a couple of different folks. Um, and, I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, it's, it's not, you know, the, the city um, isn't sitting there and being, um, you know, spiteful or, or upset about what the legislature passed um we just understand that it is what it is and we're going to have to like you said uh, make sure that we are keeping um you know accurate records and and we will pay our bills like we always do do you have any idea what the potential cost to the city could be on this no uh, ballpark numbers i would say maximum maybe a couple hundred thousand per year that's what i would assume maximum and that's that's just ballpark obviously it, it depends on a myriad of things um, I would assume that that number will obviously fluctuate as as crime fluctuates over time and um, and different factors. That's fascinating. The, I city would... is, the city is very aware of it. You know, the finance department is mm -hmm. very aware of it. I was in there. I talked with multiple department heads yesterday, and everybody's aware of it. It's not a big issue. And like I said, we we have no problems paying our bills. That's good to know. Matt Harvey as a prosecuting attorney. Do you see this coming into play at all? previous to the way that it has been structured before? Do people wait for someone in the city to go out into the county before they get arrested so that, <clears throat> so that the city doesn't have to be responsible for the bill? Well, I, I think what could potentially happen is there, there might be more summonses issued and more tickets issued in lieu of arrest, mm -hmm. and that way you don't get the front-end charge. And, and I, I you know, I've talked about this with one of the uh, police chiefs in Jefferson County, and I haven't really looked into it. So, Corey, is it your understanding that mm -hmm. if, let's say, someone's picked up on a, a destruction of property charge, arrested by Martinsburg City Police, 
and mm-hmm. for some, and then six months down the road, they get sentenced to three days in jail. Yeah. And, and but they they were given a PR bond at the beginning of the process, but then they're sentenced to three days jail because you know they do do something stupid in in between. Yeah. Um, would the city? Is it your understanding that the city pays that three days at that point? It's it's my understanding that the city will pay the bill for the arrests that are made that could have been ran through city courts but were not. That that's my understanding. So so if, if so, a city could just basically strip their municipal code down and leave it to like speeding tickets and parking issues. They would, but then that would. In, in turn increase the cost that they are going to have to, to pay out. Um, like in the city of Martinsburg, I mean, we run everything. And I, I had a conversation yesterday with, with folks from the, you know, the court system and um, law enforcement that we tried to run everything that we possibly can through our municipal courts. Um, when there is, um, and you probably would be able to speak to this better than me, I'm not a, an attorney, um, but there are certain um cases or certain you know things that that just cannot be ran through right. municipal court so they they do have to move out and therefore um we obviously would be paying um but it is my understanding that you know everything that we possibly can we run through um you know city courts so that we don't have to have that headache on the back end so if somebody hypothetically if somebody commits an assault a serious assault in in martinsburg and then he goes back to his farm in jefferson county and is arrested in Jefferson County. Where is 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 that a would the city pay for that, or would the the county pay for that? Where he is it where the crime happened, or is it where the arrest happened? It should it should be where the crime happened. Where the crime happened. So if they if he was in Jefferson County, they would they would need to bring him back, right, Matt? They would bring him well, back to Martinsburg to be. And this only applies to nonviolent misdemeanors. Exactly. The, like your felony cases are always going to go to state court. They're going. They're already. That's already been. Uh, that's already been the responsibility of the county. That doesn't change. It's we're talking about DUIs, driving revokes, uh, shopliftings, yeah, stuff like that. We're talking the the you know the smaller charges. Senator Jason Barrett is listening. He's actually going to be on the show this morning too. The city will reimburse the county only for the first five nights if the charge is also a municipal offense. Only if, if it it's. If. if so, if it could be ran through the city court and we decided not to, then we would be charged for the first five days at a rate of I think forty eight dollars and fifty cents, if I'm correct. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Thank so, you, Jason. I mean, it, it is like I said. It is what it is. We have the city has no problem paying their bills, and um, we understand that. I think that there are municipalities throughout the state that are, um, you know, taking advantage of the um, state courts. So I understand it. It's, it's there's no hard feelings. Can we shift gears a little bit? I want to talk about the opioid settlement money. Do we know how much Martinsburg is going to get out of that? No, I um, I could probably get you an answer on that, but I don't want to. I don't want to throw out a number and it'd be it'd be completely off. I'd it, like to have the actual number. Is there a wish list that of uh, whatever the hundred percent, what the block of money, whatever it's going to be? Is there a wish list that X percent goes to one priority versus another? Has that been discussed? No, that has not been discussed. I'm sure that it has been internally um, to initially see um, what the options are going to even be um, for that money. Um, you know, I don't think it's just going to be a blank check. Um, I think there's probably, there's going to be a lot of stipulations to it on how it can be spent, which right, rightfully so. Um, but I think we're just going to have to wait and, you know, do an internal process and then see how much money actually does come in and um, distribute it appropriately. And as the COVID money has expired over the last year, I guess, how has that left any holes? How much, how much less money does the city have now than it had during the the fat COVID years? Well, I mean, the the, the COVID money was allocated for various various projects throughout the city. Um, a lot of you know law enforcement and um, public service um, projects as well. Um, so I wouldn't there's um, obviously, that federal money um, fattened the coffers a bit, um, but the city has known, obviously, throughout you know time, that these federal dollars are just going to be 
cases to where, you know, you can do more things. But now that we're back into a normal flow, I think we're just fine operating, um, you know, back on our regular budget. Corey, any new news on the Lambert situation? Yeah, so I um, I had a conversation yesterday as well with some um, City Hall staff. It looks like we will have um, some numbers coming in at the end of October um, on all of the uh, various different things that that could happen out of that site. Um, you know, they're doing um, various site, you know, uh, planning and research and feasibility studies and all of that stuff right now. Um, they're going to work up some numbers within the next couple months. And they they said they're going to get back to us at the end of October. So hopefully November, going into December, we have at least some idea of uh, what the cost looks like um, moving forward. And like I said, you know, if it um, do come in, and I'm, I'm assuming that, you know, a, a full aquatic center is going to be a pretty penny, um, the city will be looking for partners Um, And we do believe that, you know, if we all come together um, and throw some money in, that uh, we can have something amazing out there. But like I said, that is just for the the high end. Um, We're going to see how the numbers come in, and then we will process it out then. When does your term – I do – Go ahead. Please finish, Corey. Yeah. I was just going to say I wanted to to plant that that bug out there, you know, because I know we have – County commissioners, we have state senators, <laughs> delegates, we have uh, CVB members, board of education members, all all listening to our program, and um, all have expressed in some way, form of opinion, or at least most of them, that uh, Lambert Pool should be opened. Um, so, we'd love to to see some partners in our community. When does your term expire, Corey? It is June. So next next summer, June of twenty four. And you are not seeking reelection, correct? Not seeking reelection to the Martinsburg City Council, no, sir. Will the Lambert situation be your number one priority until you are out of office? I I wouldn't say that it's my number one priority, Robin. That's that's just because there are a myriad of things that are going on within the city right now. I'll tell you that it's definitely on my top priority list. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but um, we have a lot of things, good things going on in the city right now. You know, city, city hall renovation um, that's going to lead us forward for the next 20, 25 years, at least, in my opinion. Um, we have a public works building that's being built. Um, we have various infrastructure projects. We're about to start road paving. Um, that list just came out not long ago. There are a bunch of roads that are going to be um, being repaved. Um, a lot of the infrastructure um, are things that, you know, I, I genuinely do care about, and, you know, I, I, I'll add Lambert in as a as a side on the infrastructure. But I wouldn't say that that's my number one top priority, Rob. All right. Well, I appreciate your time this morning. Any final questions for Corey Roman? Who would you pick for Donald Trump's uh, vice president, president if you me. were consult You? <laughs> if, if I, no, no, definitely not me. Um, I would pick. Yes, uh, I'm asking man. you. You you faded out, Corey. Yeah. Who was it? Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis. Yeah, that that, that would be interesting, <laughs> because Trump calls him Ron DeSanctimonious. So, <laughs> uh, but from a Trump standpoint, um, he might as well go ahead and shore up the the second competitor. So well, he, he can't. Can... They're they're from the both from the same state, Florida. Florida. I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see, fellas. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe maybe Rob's idea of, I think of it's him pulling one of his kids. I think it's Ivanka. I, I got a question for you. When when Rob asked you if you're going to be running again, you said you very specifically, I will not be running for Martinsburg City Council again. Does that opening a door that we're not aware of yet? Listen, fellas, I'm, I'm going to give you the Joe Manchin answer. Um, you know, over the holiday season, my family and I will sit down and we will come up with some decision. Um, You've already... And- <laughs> In but you very committed year, to not will, run um, for council. I have. I have told you that I am not running for city council, but there are a myriad of offices that are open. Um, so we will have a decision come New Year. All right. Anything you want to get out, Corey, that you didn't get a chance to cover? No, nothing, uh, nothing specifically. Obviously, I'll, I'll steal uh, Mayor, Mayor Kevin Knowles' line, keep your eyes and ears open. Martinsburg is moving forward, and it is moving forward quick. 
Corey, good to talk with you, man. Thanks, fellas. Y'all have a good day. You too. Thank you. That is Martinsburg City Councilman Corey Roman.